Alexa Smith. Welcome. Hi. My name is Darcy Taylor. Feel free to call me Darcy. And what would you like me to call you? You could just call me Amanda. Okay. Well, I hope that you had no trouble finding us here in Hillcrest today. And I also hope that our wait staff was very accommodating to you and any questions or concerns you may have had. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Amanda, I'm very happy to have you here today. And before I begin, there are a few things I would like to discuss with you, just so that you're aware. First of all, we will have about 15 minutes to spend together today to talk about you and why you're here today. I want you to feel that this is a safe place. So everything that we discuss here is confidential under almost every circumstance. There are circumstances, however, where confidentiality would have to be broken. Those circumstances would be if you were to harm yourself or others or make it aware that you were going to harm yourself or others. Or discussion with my direct supervisor about our case. That sometimes happens in our meetings. And if I was subpoenaed to court, I would have to say things about our case. Or if I was aware of situations of child abuse, I would have to also report that. Is that okay? Do you have any kind of questions or concerns about any of that? No, no, that's, that is absolutely fine with me. Okay. Well, I know that we discussed a little bit over the phone about why you were coming in today. And you mentioned that you were having a few problems in your marriage, some trouble. Can you, can you elaborate a little more on that, please? Well, um... My husband and I, we have been married over 20 years now, and we have a son together, and I've just recently found some things that really concern me and make me question his loyalty. Yeah, and I understand that. And do you care to explain just a little bit further? No, no, um, not at all. I was one day, I was going into our bedroom to get on the computer, to get on Facebook and when I opened our computer up I found that his Facebook was still logged in and normally I don't I don't check his social media accounts I don't I trust him but there was several several unread messages on there that were popped up at the bottom and there were names that I didn't recognize specifically female names so I got a little concerned and I started to read into the messages and I found although I didn't find anything that was just immediate outright inappropriate I found things that were slightly alarming and I found that he was talking to these women on several occasions so that led me to check our phone bill and I found a few numbers on there that he has been talking to an alarming amount of times per day. Yeah, and I understand why you do feel this way. And I also understand your need for loyalty. After this long marriage, that's understandable for anybody. Is there anything, though, that you may have felt that has brought the situation on between your marriage? Well, my husband and I, we, like I said, we do have a son, and our son has autism. So that in itself is like a full-time job and is very, very difficult to care for. And it's hard for us to do anything outside of our home, really, because our son requires so much of our time and so much of our attention. We're both constantly having to plan ahead when, when we do go out. It's, you know, it's, it's more difficult for us than it is for most parents. Right. And we spend so much time just taking care of him no matter where we do and I feel like that really really cuts out the spontaneity that was one of the reasons why we were so attracted to each other in the first place um, when my husband and I first got together we were always going out doing things we would we would wake up and just decide hey we're gonna take a day trip one day and I really feel like the stress of everyday life plus working so much we both we both have to work a lot of overtime because having a son with autism is very financially taxing on us yeah. and along with emotionally taxing and I just I feel like we don't really have time for just us anymore so there are several instances where life has just really put a wedge in between 
you and your husband, between taking care of your son and work, just working constantly, you, you're in the everyday push of life, and you're just both really stressed and really exhausted, and that's very understandable. But it's also a very respectable trait to be a working mother and to also care for a child with mental disability and also trying to help keep your family together at the same time. So it's understandable that you feel this way in your marriage. You know, after all this time, you were spontane spontaneity and now you're not. You know, you can't just jump up because of your son. So I can see how you feel that way. And this happens in many marriages. So maybe taking a vacation and getting a babysitter for your son to care for them so you don't have to worry as much, maybe that'll help you relax and to focus on each other. Yes, I, I agree with you, and we've, we've entertained the idea, but it's so hard to find someone to properly care for our son because caring for him, you know, it is very, very difficult. And although... Not only that, it's our son really only knows my husband and I. We have family, you know, we have family that love him, that come to visit him, but for the vast majority of the time, he, all he knows is my husband and I, and we, he's so dependent on us, and it's very, I'm afraid that being away from him, the longest we've ever been away from him, we have never even been away from him overnight. So I'm afraid of how he will react and how he will handle it. Right. And I'm also fine, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to find someone that could handle taking care of him. Yeah, well, I understand that completely. You do want to be able to trust somebody. Security is very important. You know, your family, all, you always want to be secure with your family. So have you maybe ever tried placing out an ad, maybe on a website or around town with, you know, specific references you know, maybe that somebody has already taken care of a child with mental disability and they would know more about it? I, I've thought about it, but you hear so many horror stories in the news and through social media that I'm afraid, and I realize that not everybody will be like that just because of these stories, but my son is my entire world, so I, I just couldn't possibly fathom something like that happened to him. Yeah, and I understand that. And if you would like, I can help you to maybe plan a vacation that's just a little bit away from home, not so far, just maybe, you know, half a day, even if you wouldn't like to stay a night. That way you're close to your son, you can come back if something happens, and maybe there is somebody in the family that you can trust, or we can work on an ad, you know, with specific references, and we can do background checks if you'd like to make you feel a little more comfortable. That way maybe these instances wouldn't happen like you're talking about. And but just make you feel a little better. Yes, I, I, would, I would actually appreciate that very much. Well, we can definitely get started on that very soon. Also, I'm really wondering, how are you going to address the situations in your marriage about his infidelity? Well, I don't really know as of yet because I don't want to falsely accuse him of something because you know, we've, we've been married 20 years. He's a wonderful husband. He's a wonderful father to our son. So I don't want him to accuse him of something that he hasn't done. But at the same time, I don't want to just ignore this fact. I don't, I don't want to ignore the things that I've saw. And I don't want this to be sitting in the back of my mind constantly and always wondering if something's going on and I don't want to continue to build resentment towards my husband because I'm always wondering what if what right. if and I I just I I don't know how I'm going to address that as of yet well I mean I understand you don't know how you're gonna address it as of yet but have there been instances before that maybe you have discussed infidelity Yes, yes, we've, um, not instances where it's happened, but instances where we have discussed how we feel about it, and we both agree that we don't respect people who cheat on each other. We feel that it's the easy way out, and we feel that if there were problems in our marriage specifically, 
that we would always come to each other first and we would always talk about these problems and if our marriage isn't working we're going to sit down and discuss how to fix it we wouldn't go outside of he and I to fix it right and do you feel like your husband is upholding the same same part of his deal that you are I do, but I do not at the same time because I feel like my husband didn't get to sow his wild oats because we were married so young and we have we have been each other's one and only all of our lives. So I feel like that there's part of him that wants to get out and experience the world now. He's, he's about to hit his 50s, you know, it's a possible midlife crisis. So, but on the other hand, I just, my husband is, you know, He's really, he knows how much it would hurt me and how much it would affect our family and our son. Yeah. So, you know, on one hand, you do feel that he is committed to you and your family because you've been together for 20 years and he's a very good father, as you explained. Right. So, you feel on that same hand that he, you know, he's committed to you and he doesn't want to break your loyalty and your family's trust. You, you know, I mentioned security. Yes. And he doesn't want to hurt you. So, on that same hand, you feel that way. Yeah. But on the other hand, you have your doubts about, you know, how committed he's going to be. You know, he's going through maybe this midlife crisis, and maybe he's going to do some things he's never done before. And you really don't know about that, and you have your doubts. Yes, exactly. Well, how do these doubts exactly make you feel? They scare me, mostly for fear of being alone. You know, like I said, my husband's the only man that I've ever known, and it really makes me fearful for our son because I don't want... It, it, take, it takes both of us to raise our son, right. and I don't want my son to have to go through a divorce and have to go through the heartbreak and things that that entails. Right. Yeah, and I can see how that would make you feel really scared and worried. And just remember how strong you really are. No matter what happens, you are very strong, very independent. So do you maybe have some family and friends that will support you because family circles are important. Absolutely. Um, my mother is always there for me, to listen to me, to help me with my son, and my sister is my very, very best friend. I can talk to her about anything. Well, that's good, you know, and you need to confide in them. So, do you maybe feel that you can confide in them about situations in your marriage specifically? I do. I feel like I can talk to my sister, but I'm also very scared that she will view my husband differently afterwards. Yeah, and that is understandable. But remember that our support systems will always be a big help in releasing feelings, getting things off of our shoulder, you know, getting some weight off there that we've been holding. And you also need somebody that you, you can trust to listen to you and not judge you when you feel extremely stressed. So just to recap what we've talked about today, you found some things about your husband that concern you and you like to talk to him about those things, but you're also afraid of wrongly accusing him and the repercussions that it can have. And we've discussed that maybe a vacation, just a short one away from home, would be a little better, help you get closer together, and if we can find a trustworthy babysitter. So we're going to work on some ads and things. And we're also going to try to confide in our support system. Is there anything that I've maybe missed or anything else that does concern you about our meeting today? No, I think you've definitely covered it. Well, we've definitely done some good work here today and a great platform for our future visits. And we can focus on... Finding a good babysitter and those references, you know, working on you and your husband together, strengthening the marriage between you two, and we can talk about some de-stressing techniques. You know, you're very busy, so maybe that would help you a lot. Does that all sound okay with you? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, well, um, it's absolutely just wonderful to have you here, and I appreciate everything that you have shared with me today, and thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Thank you for seeing me. It was Thank great you. to meet you.